Yeah, so a block of mass M is released from rest at the top of a curved incline in the shape of a quarter circle of radius R. The block then slides onto a horizontal plane where it finally comes to rest L meters from the beginning of the plane. The curved incline is frictionless. Okay, let's remember that that is going to be frictionless. But the coefficient of kinetic friction while the block is sliding horizontally is mu k, which is why that's kind of being represented by the crossed lines, okay? So frictionless, friction. Find an expression in terms of the given variables and universal constants for two things. The magnitude of the acceleration of the block while it slides along the plane, and b, the radius of the curved incline. Considering part A, the magnitude of the acceleration of the block, let's do what we usually do and consider the block on the surface and all the forces that might be acting on said block. And regardless of what happened before it reached the incline, I can tell you something about the forces, and that is that there is only one. The force of friction, which we will denote with a curly F. Nothing else will push us forwards. I mean in the x-axis anyway. As usual, we actually have our normal force and our mg, force of gravity. But let's consider the sum of all the forces in the x-direction and how that would appear to be, letting the left side be the negative sense, negative f. The friction works opposite our direction of motion to the left, so we say it's negative. Now, the net force in the x direction is, as usual, by Newton's second law, equivalent to ma. So ma is equal to negative f. Can we be more specific? f is not a given variable. Well, ma would be equal to negative mu k n. Force of friction is defined as the coefficient times the normal force. Now, if we consider the y-axis sum of all forces, we find that that would be equal to n minus mg, allowing the upward sense to be positive. And since there is no acceleration in the up or down direction, we may say that these are equal to zero. Now, n minus mg being equal to zero says that n is equivalent to mg. I mean, that's usually the case, but sometimes people apply that uh, idea in inappropriate places. Um, so I was just showing you that, yes, we do have the justification from Newton's second law to say that the normal force and the weight of the box are the same. Anyway, we find that the acceleration is equal to, dividing both sides by m, negative mu k mg over m, which actually cancels out the m's. Could have seen that if I was paying attention, but the acceleration is equal to negative mu kg as it often is when friction is the only force in play. They asked for the magnitude of the acceleration. That means that we can ignore the fact that our answer mathematically turned out to be negative, naturally in agreement with the fact that the box should be slowing down. We say that the magnitude of the acceleration is mu kg. In part B, we talked about the radius of the curved incline, this thing, which, conveniently enough, considering the starting position of the box and the ending position of the box as it slides along that curve, happens to be equal to the height, which means we should probably talk about conservation of energy. Or to be totally consistent with the methods I'm going to use across this entire problem, the work energy theorem. Let's consider the safest starting point from which we can begin all energy-related and work-related problems. The work done by external forces, such as friction, must be equal to the change in mechanical energy of the whole system, the internal energy, things like gravity and spring energy 
and electrostatic energy. The work done in this case, as we slide down the incline, is equal to zero because it's frictionless. Nothing is coming in to speed up or slow down the box. So zero is equal to the change in energy. Energy is conserved. You might have assumed that from the beginning anyway, which means that the final energy is equal to the initial energy. Again, initial up here, final down here. Initially, we can consider that we have some kind of height, okay? We are released from rest, but we have height, so we have initial energy. We're familiar with that being potential energy, and I'll use the definition MGHI, all right? Where this is your initial height, and we're going to call the ground zero so that we can say that the energy finally is all kinetic, total conversion of potential to, to kinetic energy, even though it's a curved, um, curved path. Okay, energy is one of the work, work and energy, one of those things that's independent of the path taken. It's kind of a kind of a thing you have to know sometimes. But here, I just say at the bottom, it's all energy of motion. We have one half m v squared. Okay, where v is that vf, that final velocity of that path. Here I see some masses canceling out. And to make some more space, it seems we have v squared over 2 equals gh. But actually, instead of h, I'm going to bring up my variable of interest, r, the thing I'm looking for. So dividing both sides by g, I have that v squared over 2 is equal to, sorry, v squared over 2g is equal to my radius. Now that's pretty good. Actually, I shouldn't draw a box around that. Maybe we'll draw a dotted box around that because it's almost the final answer. It's just that the final velocity here is not one of those allowed variables that I'm allowed to solve the problem in terms of. So I'm close, but I have to find a way to express this velocity in terms of given things. And unfortunately, that means we're going to need to go to the other side of the problem, the part where there's friction, to figure out what the initial velocity of that part would be. But that doesn't have to be too difficult because we know the acceleration already. We know that we start with some velocity here all the way to v equals zero at the end because it comes to rest again as a result of friction. So... Let's take advantage of that by saying that the acceleration is equal to mu kg, the final velocity is equal to zero, the initial velocity is what we'd like to know, and the distance over which this takes place, the displacement is L. Actually, the acceleration, forgive me, is negative mu kg if the displacement is allowed to be a positive L. Again, that's going to be the positive sense. So this is starting to look like a kinematics problem. And these four variables being in question is making me think of this little beauty. Vf squared equals vi squared plus 2a displacement. So 0 squared is equal to v squared plus 2 negative mu kg times l. This is algebraically equivalent to now adding the negative term here to both sides to v squared is equal to 2 mu k g l. I could take the square root of both sides and find the velocity, but why bother doing that? The version of velocity I need to find in my actual equation of interest is squared anyway. So let's make the substitution. r is equal to using this color to represent the substitution to mu k g l over 2 g. And we have a few cancellations there. Ultimately, the radius is equal to mu k l. What a bizarrely elegant solution, and I like it very much.